out and summer's heating up. Today, you'll witness the future of collegiate football. It's time for these high school grads to rumble and tumble before they take their game to the next level. The second annual Cali Florida Bowl is coming up next on Fox Sports Net. Central California coast, the Blue Pacific lapping at the white sand beaches. We are on campus at the University of California at Santa Barbara as Fox Sports Net 2 presents the very best in high school football. That's right, it may be summer, but this is still a very big game as the very best from California take on the All-Stars from the Sunshine State. Hi everybody, Jim Watson back with John Jackson. Welcome to UCSB. It is beautiful, it is summer, and a big game. And JJ, this argument's gone on for a long time. Florida or California, who has the better high school football? This is the best place to sell it, right on the field. That's right, Jim. It is an ongoing argument where the best football is played on the east or the west coast. It continues at the college tradition because USC and UCLA, of course, Miami, Florida State, but in high school, the rivalry's just as strong. California, Florida. California got the best of Florida last year. We'll see if Florida can turn that around this year. Florida's high school football tradition runs very deep. Guys like Deion Sanders, Emmett Smith, and Warren Sapp have all come out of Florida, and this team is just as strong and just as fast, led by one of the best athletes, not only in the state of Florida, but in the country, A.D. McPherson, and this guy is special from Southeast High in Bradenton. That's right, miraculous, special, spectacular, and legendary. This is the first athlete to be named the Florida player of the year in both football and basketball in Florida history with all the great athletes that come out of there. McPherson, a phenomenal athlete. California has their hands full trying to stop him. McPherson accounted for 4,400 yards and 52 touchdowns during his senior campaign. He is on his way to Florida State. So who's going to stop McPherson in that potent Florida offense? Well, you look in the secondary for California and to find a guy who will be McPherson's teammate at Florida State in just a couple of months and another guy who actually was a quarterback in high school. Yeah, Matt Ware is probably the best two-way player in California last year as a defensive back and a quarterback. As a quarterback, threw for over 1,000 yards, and as a rusher, he ran for over 1,000 yards, so a tremendous athlete. And, of course, Dominic Robinson, prime time is his nickname. His idol is prime time. He plays like prime time. Today, he'll try to shut people down like Deion Sanders prime time. Talent from sideline to sideline. 31 players on the California roster are signed to Pac-10 schools. Last year they met on the floor of the Rose Bowl. California beat Florida 22 to 11. Florida players said California does not respect them and that will all change over the next two hours. We're coming back to UCSB. The California Bowl 2 on Fox Sports Net is being brought to you by Air 7 Sports. The shortest distance between you and the NFL. Absolutely picture-perfect day in Santa Barbara, one of the best resorts along the California coast, and today plays a backdrop to a high school football game. Florida versus California. I'd like to welcome those viewers watching on Fox Sports Florida and here in Southern California on Fox Sports Net 2 as they are set to line things up. The head coach for Florida, Jim Sauls from Leon High School in Tallahassee, just retired after 10 years as the head coach and more than 20 years at the school. Across the way, the California head coach will actually be handling the California defense today. John Mack from St. Bonaventure says he has no idea what his overall record is in the past 10 years. He just straps it on and plays football every Friday night. Well, while most of these guys are already signed and delivered to colleges and have proven themselves over four years at the prep level, there's one guy in the field today that is still trying to prove himself. Mike Lamb down on the sideline has more on that. Well, I think the plot of this game is you want to see how high school players transition to play against college guys. And a guy who really has a subplot here is Tyler Ebell. He is a running back that ran for 64 touchdowns, almost 4,500 yards this year. California State Player of the Year. But he's not the biggest guy in the world. And the rap on him has been he got his yards against inferior opponents. In fact, there was something in the paper today. I saw Tyler in the dorm reading the paper, the quotes from the Florida players, saying he wasn't the guy. I asked him how he felt about that. And he said, hey, I'm the kind of guy that likes to challenge I want to play with it. Bring those Florida guys out here. And then he looked back to me and he just said, tell them to bring it. So look for a big game from Tyler Ebell. They're about to bring it. Tyler Ebell, huge numbers in high school, a national record. His senior year rushing on the ground. And Mike mentioned those 64 touchdowns. And Tyler Ebell may be the first guy to touch the football today 
He's back there and stands just 5'9", 160 pounds, and next to him is Matt Clark, who's also going to UCLA with Tyler e. Bell, who's also 5'9", and only 185 pounds. So they stand with the kick of Ryan Rankin. Rankin from Riverview High School in Sarasota, on his way to Florida Atlantic, and one last high school game to play. He puts his foot into it, and California Bowl 2 is underway. This ball squirts away and is picked up by Matt Clark. Clark along the near sideline makes a couple of moves. It bangs, he crosses the 23-yard line. That is where California will start, 16 yards on the return. The quarterback for California starting things off, David Corral. You see 65% completion. That's the system he played in, 4,907 yards. He set a national record with 764 yards in one game last fall. One game, 764 yards. He ranks third nationally all time for passing yards in one season with those 49.07. Big numbers, 44 touchdowns and just 12 picks in the system, which the ball was in the air all night long. So California comes to the line. Defenses have to play a 4-3, and we expect to see the ball in the air all day. Four receivers and one guy behind. It's E. Bell, they fake to him. Corral rolls and throws short as a man. First down for California. It's Greg Carlson, who was Corral's teammate at Palisades High. Carlson on his way to USC, 15 yards. Here's your offensive line for California. Blanton, Grayling Love will play both ways. Sean Finnerty, Keith Ornelas played at Loyola High School. We know about him. And Mark Fenton, very good, very big up front. Valerie Bell we talked about, Matt Clark as well. Charles Ely could be a surprise today. Demetrius Williams played at De La Salle High School. That's the school for the Barrier with 113 consecutive victories. They haven't lost since 92. And Terrence Whitehead also on the field. California with a lot of guys who can fly, can stretch a defense. Corral this time on the ground. He bell. Short gain. Out to about the 47-yard line for Tyler Ebell. Defensively for Florida. Ovince St. Prue, Casey Carroll, Damien Hay, and Cephas Johnson. All very fast up front, just like you'd expect from Florida. The linebackers, Dunham, Poston, and Oris Lambert. And in the secondary, Jamal Fudge, Al Peterson, Kyler Hall is probably the best guy back there at strong safety, and Sean Taylor. So, J.J., you might expect that Florida would keep Corral in front of them right now, and that's the kind of game that Corral likes to play. There's that short drop. Nothing there, so he steps into the middle. Cross midfield. He squirts his way down to the 46-yard line. That should be enough for another California first down. Well, Jim, the interesting thing about David Corral is that he is playing in his own system. As you mentioned, he's from Pacific Palisades. This offense is his offense. So in an all-star game with only a week of practice, very tough to get familiar with the offense and the scheme. But the one benefit for the California team is Dave Corral has played in this system. This drive started back inside their own 25-yard line. They've moved across midfield. Opening drive of California Bowl two. Best from California and the best from Florida. High school football players for one last day. It is a first down. Hand off to Ebel. Ebel down to about the 43. Tyler Ebel admittedly was a little bit discouraged when he first got the call for this game because he expected a lot of passing and didn't expect to see the ball too much. Here's some of the rules. Offense is the same as always. Defensively, as I mentioned, you got to run a 4-3. You can't blitz or stunt, but in the red zone, you can bring seven people. You just got to bring them inside. And, of course, J.J., all of this is to encourage offense and make it more entertaining for the folks. Right, and you don't want to have an all-star football game. They you don't have any points scored on the board. So now, as an offensive coordinator, you know what the defense is going to be in. They're going to be in that 4-3 defense. They're going to be in the 3-deep zone. So you know how to attack them. It's just a matter of execution. Of course, that is a tough factor when you only have a week to practice. Trips left, and then Philip Goodman at the bottom of the screen. They fake Dewey Bell. Corral rolls left. Wanted his primary guy. No, wasn't there, so he spins inside the 40 down to the 39-yard line. Florida doing a good job so far covering California deep on the corners. Yeah, Florida has great speed in their secondary as well as California, and they are doing a good job. That really was a great job of coverage down the field, but Corral making two excellent decisions so far in this drive. Able to pull the ball down. That time he picked up about seven yards, so he's keeping his offense in very short yardage situations, so that is a very good job by David Corral. Like Willie Jones there for Florida on the stop. Brings up a third down and three. Have to get to about the 36-yard line to move the sticks again from the shotgun. A little shovel inside, and Florida reads it out. Well, you know, that's a play that 
really came to prominence in Florida, and you figure these guys know how to stop it. <laughs> they definitely had the scouting report out on that play, Jim. They tried to pitch it to Terrence Whitehead, throwing a little misdirection on the Florida defense, but this defensive front for Florida is very, very good. You can see the penetration up the field, able to shut down all the running lanes. Terrence Whitehead really had no chance. Chauncey Davis from Auburndale on his way to Florida State with the stop. It's fourth down and seven now for California. So Brian New will come in and kick it away. Brian Puts his foot into about Just the 47-yard line. And wisely kicking it away from the dangerous Florida players. They have so much talent. Sean Taylor is back there, and he has returned a couple of punts this season for touchdowns. Ball boy, ball boy. Now we talked about Adrian McPherson. They call him AD. That's what he calls himself. Again, good completion percentage rate, 3,724. We told you at the top of the show, not only the 42 touchdowns through the air, but 54 or 52 total touchdowns and 4,400 yards total offense in his senior year. This guy is special First going to Florida State. Ten, they know all about him down there. Yeah, and they had, the coaches couldn't have enough well, to say about him. AD just a tremendous athlete. He's going to follow sort of in the footsteps of the Charlie Ward. You know, Charlie Ward, a great Heisman Trophy winner at Florida State and also now an NBA basketball player. A.D. McPherson has those two points too. He likes to get outside the tackles and throw very active and California was concerned about just this, letting him run. He tucks it away and goes back out of bounds at the 20 yard line. A lot of running and a short game. Take a look at the rest of Florida. Offensive line up front. Matt Hines is very good. Cesar Paz in the middle. Vernon Edwards, John Wilson and Fred Nolan. Backs and receivers, Mike Gilliam starts in the backfield in the four guys out on the flats. Ellis, Crow Thorpe, Jaworski Pollock, and Chris Gamble. And Jim Sauls for Florida head coach. We were asking about all this speed, all this talent on the outside, and he said, hey, I'm more concerned with the offensive line because uh, it doesn't matter how good your aircraft carrier is, you can't get the Jets off the deck. Short pass turned back inside. Charles Frederick from Pope John Paul High School in Boca Raton. Defensively for California, again, it's a 4-3. Bernard Fano from Fountain Valley High School is big and has been awesome in practice this week. Randall Bowen, Graylin Love, again, should get tired. He's playing both ways. And Mike Finelli. Dan Catalano, brother, was a great receiver in high school in this area. He's a linebacker. Dominic Robinson and Matt Ware, we talked about. Jabril, Jabril Ramo is also very good. Doesn't get as much pub as he should. Florida going deep and got a man, Frederick. And it went just off the fingertips. Might have been tipped as California responded late. But a good arm by McPherson. He threw that ball about 50 yards. Yeah, McPherson shows you his ability, what he can do. This is a half roll, Jim. It's designed to get him out of the pocket, relieve some of the defensive pressure up front. And Jim, he puts this ball in the air about 60 yards in the air. I don't even think the receiver thought he could throw it that far. See Dominic Robinson in coverage actually trips and falls, but Matt Ware in a 3 deep coverage. Of course, you know they'll be in 3 deep coverage all day. Able to get there and make sure that that was not a completion. It's a second down and 10. McPherson rolls to his right, goes to the short man. McPherson's pass is complete. Jaworski Pollock went to Southeast High School in Bradenton, and that's the same high school as the head coach of the Florida team, Jim Sauls. In fact, Jim Sauls talked about this young man and how tough he was in their system going across the middle. You watch McPherson play in the early minutes, JJ. We've heard all about him. We've read about him. First chance we've gotten to see. What's your early impression? Well, I mean, he's done everything that you would expect from a tremendous athlete. He's able to half roll. He's able to drop back. He has a, a very strong arm. So, A.D. McPherson, they told us, that this kid is going to be just rewrite the record book as far as high school goes and at the college level, and he's making a good start so far. Three guys in the backfield. They give Demarcus Jones. He's on his way to Rutgers. Jones pops it outside after an initial hit. It was third down and about one and a half, and he looks to have enough. Get a message from the offensive coaches for the Florida team said that they were going to put the ball in the air 80 percent of the time today. That is the first rush from scrimmage aside from a scramble from A.D. McPherson. So they are true to form. They're going to throw the ball all night long. Florida. Florida said what? About 80% about they told us the other day in some meetings. Jim Saul said, you know what? It's an all-star game. We want to entertain people. And look at the athletes I have at my fingertips. Jim Saul's retiring from Southeastern High School. From the shotgun. Pearson. Everybody was covered, so he steps and spins. About the 46-yard line, so it's going to be second down about seven yards. Let's go down to Mike Lamb on the sideline. Jim, you guys have talked about the athletic ability of Adrian McPherson, and it's usually in these all-star games 
the more athletic quarterback. In fact, the California camp wanted to work Matt Ware out more during the week at quarterback than they did on defense. And if they get into trouble in this game, you could see Matt Ware coming out to work some at quarterback. And we talked about that a couple times during the week. You know, and he's going to UCLA. We're talking about Matt Ware, and, and he was a tremendous high school and quarterback, but UCLA wants to use him in the secondary. Pass out in the flat. That's a first down for Florida. Mike Gilliam, Lincoln High in Tallahassee. Lincoln High, one of the strong programs in Florida. Jim, you see the patience in the offense so far by McPherson. This is another attribute that makes him so special. He's not going to make mistakes. He's very heady in the pocket, and he makes sure that he does not turn the ball over. That time he was looking downfield, nobody open, so just drop it off to your safety valve. And as you mentioned, all the great athletes, the safety valve picked up 10 yards on that on just a screen set. That was to Gilliam. Gilliam led Lincoln to a 13-1 mark in senior year. McPherson steps up just short of the line of scrimmage, goes to Jones in the flat. Jones is shut down of bounds. But not until he gets inside the 35 to the 34-yard line. So McPherson is buying time, JJ, but they talked about his decision-making. Sure, he's a great athlete. He can do anything, but he doesn't make mistakes. Yeah, watch this. There he's looking down the field, look for your initial target, but then when he doesn't have anything, he goes to his outlets in the flat. And remember, 3D coverage by these teams, those flats in both sides of the field, the strong and the weak side, will be open. It's just the quarterback that has the patience to take advantage of it. So far, McPherson is doing it. That's Larry Jones from Leon High School in Tallahassee. It made the catch. McPherson this time nowhere to go. California with some great pressure right up the middle. The guy that got there first is Michael Craven. Michael Craven from La Quinta High School out in Palm Springs, and he's going to Stanford to play Pac-10 football. Yeah, and that's going to be the challenge for the defensive front and the front seven for the California defense. They need to get pressure on McPherson, and then when he gets out of the pocket, you're going to have to have linebackers like Craven able to penetrate at the proper angle because you cannot over pursue him. He will break long runs from the pocket, so Craven does a nice job coming from his middle linebacker position that time to make the play behind the line of scrimmage. And behind guys like... Craven, they have Dominic Robinson and Matt Ware, so you know those backers can get up field because they have the confidence. Two of the best athletes in the state of California right behind them. Trips left now for Florida on a second down and 14. McPherson misses a run all the way. Tries to juke. McPherson wrapped up and drops. Now Jabril Ramo, and talked about him at the top, J.J. from Beverly Hills High School. Everybody talks about Dominic Robinson and Matt Ware, but this guy, Jabril Ramo, and I talked about it last night with you guys at the hotel. I said this guy was going to have a great game today. Yeah, probably one of the most underrated secondary players on this California team because, as you mentioned, Dominic Robinson and Matt Ware, Ramo from Beverly Hills High School will go to UCLA next year. That time, a great job pursuing from the secondary. That was a design draw. Ramo able to sniff it out and come up and make a play. You said it, he's going to UCLA, which means he'll team with Matt Ware. They could be together just like they are right now. Yeah, there's going to be a tough second there. Third down and 17 from the 41-yard line for Florida. McPherson right at the midfield stripe. Lost one up down the sideline. Got a man. It got there late. Is the ball intercepted? Now Dominic Robinson says he picked it off. And the officials agree. Jim, you are going to see on this play why Dominic Robinson called himself prime time and why everybody else in California. He closed, JJ, he closed. Just like that. He was closing speed. <laughs> Typical Deion Sanders. Dominic Robinson is beat on this pass. McPherson throws the ball. He actually throws a good ball, but the closing speed from McPherson, you can't even recognize it from that angle. He comes up, not only gets there, but makes a play, and that is what Dominic Robinson has done all year, and that's why he was one of the most highly regarded defensive backs in California. Florida State thought so much of him. They came out 3,000 miles to come recruit this kid. He will go to Florida State next year and follow after his idol, Deion Sanders, for making plays like that. And our producer, Micah King, asked him this week, why are you going all the way to Florida State? He said, because I'm prime time too. <laughs> Here's Matt Leiter from Modern Day who stepped in at quarterback. We expected this. The California coaches told us that they would rotate the quarterbacks. Matt Leiter, the big lefty from Modern Day. He will go to USC, just under 3,000 yards. And again, great completion percentage. And, and JJ, you know, I we cover a lot of high school football. I'm always impressed by the yards, but it's that completion percentage that I like to look at. Yeah, and Matt Leiter makes great decisions, Jimmy. He does not turn the ball over. Very strong arm. He'll go to USC next year. And in that modern-day offense that we had a chance to see, he orchestrated that offense perfectly. 
a good decision. We'll see if he can get this wide open offensive attack started today. Well, folks in Florida probably have heard of Modern Day High School in Santa Ana down in Orange County in the Southern California area. The great program they have. Liner throws as a man. It's Craig Carlson. Carlson's got a couple of catches already. Now check it. It's Willie Buchanan. 31, not three. Willie Buchanan from Oceanside High School. Actually, he told us, don't call me Willie. That was my dad. It's William Buchanan. So it's William Buchanan. We want to make sure we get it right. William Buchanan going to USC. So liner to Buchanan is something that may be said for the next couple of years. Yeah, his dad was the guy who played for the Kansas City Chiefs. Super Bowl in 1969. The Vikings. It's a first down for California. No score yet, but both teams have moved the ball up and down the field. Liner hands it off to the first guy through. The only guy actually in the backfield is Dorsey. Dominique Dorsey to Larry. Going to UNLV, and that means, JJ, that he'll work for your dad. He'll play for John Jackson Sr. at UNLV. Your dad's the offensive coordinator for John Robinson. And I got to tell you, Dominique, you're going to have your hand full dealing with John Jackson Sr. <laughs> Yeah, my dad is uh, assistant head coach at UNLV. They're very pleased with their recruiting class this year. They picked up Dominic Dorsey and, of course, Irvin Johnson, who we have not had a chance to see yet today, but he is a special receiver. So they're very pleased they were able to get two of the best players in California to UNLV. Smith, Buchanan, and Clark are the guys in the pattern. Liner throws out in the flat. That's Smith, who came back to get it. Liner to a nice softball. Let the receiver come back. Now, you played receiver at USC in the NFL. Why is that important for a quarterback to throw that kind of ball? Well, it's really a timing pass, Jim. It's not always important to just show off your arm and your arm strength on every pass. The ball's in the air right before he makes the break. And as you see, it comes back to the ball. He's back to the sideline. It's a nice save throw by Matt Liner. That is just a heads-up decision. If he needed to put more on that ball, he would have, but he recognized the 3D coverage. He had a receiver open. Just pitch and catch, first down. California again moving the ball out near midfield. Their first possession, they went into Florida territory. Throw it out in the flat. Dominique Dorsey made the catch, and it was put down right away. Juan Brown, Glade Central, Del Glade. And that's always a good tackle. When you ca catch a receiver in the backfield, that means you're closing quickly. Yeah, because Dominique Dorsey has great moves, and for Brown to come up and make that tackle in the open field, that is huge. And that's the type of plays that California made on their defensive stand that Florida needs to make now because you're going to have a lot of talented athletes in open space with the way that the rules are designed in this game. So tackling is of utmost importance. So the ball at the 46, it's second down and 10. Liner Dorsey in the backfield. Liner again forced to that left side. He's a left-handed guy, likes to go that way. Has his man. It's Carlson. Carlson inside the 30, the longest play of the game so far. Yeah, Matt Liner dropped his right in between the zone coverage. They're going to flood the zone on the left side. They're going to have an out pattern and a corner route. So Liner looks to the out pattern and throws to the corner route, able to find the receiver in the seam. That's just a nice ball, great touch. Touch pass by Matt Liner. Nice softball again into the hands of Greg Carlson from Pacific Palisades High. Played with David Corral, but he caught that ball from Liner. Carlson will go to USC with Liner, but Carlson is going as a walk-on. He says, that's where I want to play, and I'll, I'll earn my ticket. First down, 25 yards on the catch. Inside the 30 now for California. No score. Dorsey grabbed by the ankle and stretches forward for a yard or two. The guy who had him was Andre Hostin of Hillsborough High School in Tampa. He's going to Central Florida. Yeah, Jim, we talked to both coaches before the game and talked about the offensive game plan. Both coaches are committed to throwing the ball, but I think the one ingredient that can help both teams today is the ability to run the ball. Both teams huge up front. California's offensive line, 6'5", 296. That's the average, not one person. And then on, for <laughs> Florida, you have 6'4", 291. So they're very big. Both teams very big up front. We'll see if either coach decides to be a little bit more patient and run the ball. Whitehead in motion, they hand it to him. Cuts back, hits, stood up, dropped. Terrence Whitehead from Crenshaw High School. Of course, Crenshaw High School has made its name in high school basketball, but some great athletes. Of course, uh, Gerald Strawberry came off that campus. And Whitehead is going to Oregon. 
Yeah, very highly recruited Terrence Whitehead. Got a great shot. He almost led them to the city championship this year. Whitehead surprisingly will play defensive back in college. And the coaches have told us that you might want to keep an eye on 24 because if they run a trick play, that's the guy who could throw the ball. So just a great athlete. It's a third down and six now for California. They split their receivers, two on either side. Tyler Ebell in the backfield. It'd be a good play for Ebell right here. Spread everybody out, give it to him right up the gut. And Corey Bell, Leiter going to the corner, laying one out. A little bumping, and now neither player had a shot at that football. Leiter had to get rid of it under pressure. Leiter originally looked to his right side. The primary guy was covered. Checked off, and the second guy and just threw it out of bounds. They want to make a mistake. Yeah, there is really nothing there for Matt Leiter, so he decides that since they're in field goal range, throw that ball away. Give your field goal kicker a chance. And his field goal kicker today is the same guy who kicked for modern day this year and Matt Leiner. Talking about Brian New. And one interesting thing about the field goal today, Jim, the goalposts are NFL regulation goalposts. So they're not as wide as in high school or college. So a little bit of a challenge in an all-star game for the kicker. It's a 43-yard attempt. And Carlson on the hole. New gets his foot into it. That ball is blocked. Picked up by Carlson. But Florida's going to get it back. And our first big defensive play of the game, David Dunham from Columbia High School in Lake City. Going to Clemson. He got through quickly and absolutely smothered Brian New's kick. Dunham right up the gut and keeps this game scoreless. It's California Bowl 2. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. David Dunham and his Florida teammates. They got something to say, JJ. Florida got beat last year. Here's the kick by New. Dunham right up the middle. No chance for Brian New. He smothers that one. John Mack, the California coaches, who had him? Came right up the middle. The last thing you want is pressure up the middle. David Dunham, though, first team All-State in Florida. That was just an outstanding individual effort, Jim. And for him to lay out right in front of a kick, that takes a lot more than just, it does, it's a lot harder than it looks. Great play by Dunham. McPherson rolls to his right, throws back to the left side. Has a man open, it's Larry Jones. Larry Jones inside the 35-yard line. Now, I think McPherson faded California a little bit. They rolled to that right side, let the pressure come, and they threw back in the flat. Yeah, that's a great job of by the offensive coordinator for Florida. In the first drive, McPherson constantly rolled, rolled, and threw to the side. He was rolling two that time. He rolled to the right, a design screen, comes back to the left. Remember, Jim, this is an all-star football game. Both teams are fired up to play in this one. Take advantage of the aggression by throwing this direction, and, of course, screens to the backside. That was a nice play by McPherson and a great run by Jones. And Jones is from Leon High School. His coach, Jim Sauls, the Florida head coach today, and I'm sure they ran that play a couple of times. First down at the 32-yard line. Movement by California. No whistle. McPherson, good protection this time. Now it starts to break down, and now he's put down. And a nice pressure in the backfield. That front four for California, able to apply the pressure to McPherson. And this is what you have to do with a quarterback with this much mobility and agility. You have to hem him in the pocket and just let things squeeze down on him. A nice play by Robbie Valenzuela. Valenzuela going to Oregon, so Valenzuela makes his first sack of the game. Grace Davis, that's up in the Modesto area. Valenzuela, 117 tackles and nine sacks during his senior season. And there was another guy, JJ, that was in on that. That was Joe Toledo, who's coming from the other side. He's listed as a tight end today. Handoff as Florida wants to keep it on the ground now and get back some of those yards. A little bit, oh, a little bit after the play. Gilliam on the run. Let's get out of Mike Lamb on the sideline. Mike, it's getting a little chippy. Yeah, that's, that's something that you expected if you saw these teams all week long. Hey, interesting story. Right guard John Wilson was on vacation in France with his girlfriend and her family. Got a phone call last Saturday night and said, hey, I need an offensive lineman. He gets on the plane, flies 10 hours from Europe to Florida, gets home Saturday night, gets on the Florida plane the next morning and flies out here. And you know where he's going to school? Air Force. And he's going to be getting used to being on those planes. Back up to you, Jim. Well, the coach has told us that he's a smart kid. He's a great kid. But, you know, the most 
amazing and part of that story is he got his girlfriend's parents to pay for him to go to Europe. <laughs> he might be brilliant. <laughs> I'm saving box tops at the house. <laughs> From the 38-yard line, third down and long, McPherson rolls to the right, throws underneath. Uh, he has a completion, but short of the first down. Jaworski Pollock, Southeast High School in Bradenton. Yeah, McPherson, the same high school as McPherson. They've played together. Right, they hook up right here, and McPherson does a nice job rolling. Look at Pollock, he works away from the zone. That's a great job by the receiver, great awareness. And that was just a strike by McPherson. So that puts them in a fourth and short situation. Jim, that is just a heads up play by McPherson. He doesn't go down the field trying to get the first down, trying to force something. Take what the defense gives you, put your team in a fourth and short situation to try to pick up the first down. Jaworski Pollock will go to North Carolina. Timeout on the field, it'll be fourth down and short. Florida with the timeout, 1.50 to play in the first quarter of California Bowl two. Ryan Rankin for Florida will line up to attempt a 43 yard kick. Our first points of the day. I talked with Ryan right before the game. You know, the wind is blowing the other direction. He said he would rather kick the other way, but Florida let the clock run out. So nice kicking into the wind. 43-yarder, and that ball is blocked. Taken out of the air by California. So both kicks from the exact same spot, and the same result blocked. Well, Jim, as expected in an all-star game, there's only a week to practice, and one thing that doesn't get as much attention is the special teams, and it's hurt both teams so far. Right the ball over off the California. edge, There's Marcus Castle able to turn the corner and block this kick by Rankin. Snap good, the hold good, and actually the timing good. But if you go unblocked from that edge, Marcus able to come in, Castle coming able to come in and make that block a great play. To complete the point, JJ, because he's kicking into the wind, Rankin has to keep that ball lower, and that makes it an easier block. If they kick it to the other end with the wind, he can just chip it up into the jet stream and let it float between the, the uprights. So they come up empty. Yeah, we'll see the total yards, four, California with a slight advantage and about what we expected in the first quarter. We expect the defenses to dominate a little bit early. David Corral back at quarterback for California. Throws to Carlson who catches and pitches to Tyler Ebell. California, for first day time today, goes into the playbook and a flag afterwards as everybody pushing and shoving and a lot of talking. Wakes up the crowd, wakes up both benches. It's Corral to Carlson and then to Ebel. And you want to get this ball to Tyler Ebel anytime you can in the open field. And that's just what they do. Yeah, just a little imagination with the pitch to Ebel. Now watch Ebel. Remember, he's only 5'8". And look at the punishment he lays on the defender. And he the didn't go down. JJ no, stayed up. He didn't. The hook and ladder to Ebel. He has great speed. And he's known for this great speed and quickness. But you see, he drops the shoulder. Tyler Ebel, tired of being called small, 5'9", 160. But you see him just lower the shoulder that time to get great leverage. A nice play, a nice imagination by the California offense. Tyler Hall and Dewan Brown are the guys that sandwiched Ebel. They both went down, and well, they called Tyler Ebel Mighty Mouse because on his bicep he's got a tattoo of Mighty Mouse. But ironically, the, the Mighty Mouse tattoo is holding a basketball. He said he got it when he was 14. He thought he was going to be a basketball player. Well, the referees are going to talk about this when it was all after the play. There are three flags playing out on the field at about the 45-yard line. And Jim, I tell you, the trash talking between these two teams has gone on the entire game. And, you know, tempers are going to flare. Remember, there's a lot of pride behind this game. Florida coming in, they felt like they did not send their best team to California last year to represent the state. Of course, this team is loaded with talent. So, for that reason, they have a, a quote-unquote chip on their shoulder. And California, of course, trying to defend their one Cal Florida win. So... There's a lot of tension between these two teams, and it's been going on throughout the game. This is the first penalty, though, that's been called. Yeah, they are high schoolers, but they know about the rivalry. It's a bi-coastal thing, Florida and California. Joe Conti is our referee. So apparently everybody's satisfied now. They'll let us know exactly what they've decided. Joe Conti now going to run from the California sideline over to the Florida sideline. Frank Viller, Larry Martinez, Tom Utron, Dan Novak, Dan Ramirez, and John Arona. Those are your officials for today's game. Conti is talking with Sauls. Now, in the meantime, it gives us a chance. Pass along this reminder that you can get your auto racing fix tomorrow all across the Fox Networks as NASCAR moves to Sears Point here on Fox Sports Net at 7 in the morning. That's early, JJ. It's NASCAR this morning, followed by the Dodge 350. That's over on Fox at noon. And finally, switch back over to get a complete wrap-up of the racing day with NASCAR Victory Lane. 
at 9 o'clock. It's all on the Fox Networks, your home for NASCAR. At 7 a.m., JJ, get up, turn the engine over. Jim, I will be up at 7 o'clock in the morning. I'll tell you what, growing up like most people in California, I didn't understand NASCAR as a kid. I made fun of it, but now I'm hooked. <laughs> I tell you what, it's great. It's great coverage. You're right in the cockpit. The cars are loud. And they bang doors, but that ain't rubbing, that's racing, JJ. Unbelievable <laughs> graphic, too, when they do show those NASCAR races. Good time. Well, the ball has moved out After near the 50-yard line. So the penalty went against Florida. Ball I think, right inside the I think it actually was offsetting penalties. Right, that's so the right ball hand. ends up at, at the 50. Yeah, you can, I guess you got to make it that way now, don't you? This early in the game. So first down at the 50 for Corral. Corral steps up, pressure coming. And Corral is hammered. Corral knocked down on the play like Willie Jones, the linebacker, Willie stepping Jones. through. Willie Jones, Carroll City. City. Yeah, now Willie Jones is something special though, Jim. The Super no Pet Magazine play. defensive Second player down. of the year. Second now, down. he's had a knee injury earlier in the week. They were questionable whether he was even going to be able to play in this game. But the coach from Florida say that they need him. He is that kind of player. Unbelievable coming off the corner. Willie Jones makes a nice play. Another Florida player headed to Florida State. They keep him home. That's the key. Used to happen out here, remember, JJ? Well, Matt Leinert's staying home. He's going to USC. He throws this ball in the flat. He's got Ely. Charles Ely from Palisades High, go to Fresno State. He's playing in the same system he played in in high school, so he knows where to go. At 73 catches, average about 18 yards a catch, 1,300 yards, and 16 touchdowns on the year. Now, Jim Watts, this is a phenomenal throw by Leonard with a player in his face, getting ready to drill him in the chest. You see right there, he's able to throw that ball and deliver a strike to Ely. A lot of times you see the pass and you don't understand what the quarterback goes through. That time, Matt Leonard recognized and knew he was going to get hit. Around able to stand strong in the pocket and make that throw. And Le Leonard in just for the one play, and he goes back out, and Corral is back in. The coaches told us they would rotate series, but for some reason, Leonard came in for one, maybe just to throw that ball. Here's Corral. Corral's pass is incomplete. He was trying to go to Dominic Robinson, who's listed as a D-back, but of course, great first athlete, quarters, put him on offense. Right, you know, you talk about the quarterback with Corral. I think seven, that this is Corral's series. Remember, the California team alternating series with the quarterback. Was, uh, Corral took that big sack by Willie Brown and to take a playoff to probably get some equipment straight. Five. That's why Liner came in through that last pass. And of course, Corral, he's so, so straight in the competition, he's right back in there. Not going to let his series go away. I was going to say that, yeah, if you're only getting every other series and you're used to playing all night, you're not going to miss any snaps. Crowd, we told you at the top for the national record, 764 passing yards in one game. One game, 764. Crowd, short drop, throws on the slant. Throws behind Philip Goodman, and then a late hit as Goodman got leveled. John Taylor came from his free safety position. They're a little bit late. <laughs> yeah, very late. Hey, you know. <laughs> Jim, I understand it's the all-star game and there's a lot of things that go into it, but you know, hits like oh. this is what you have to stay away from. That's a very dangerous hit. The player exposed, the ball already incomplete. So we understand there's a lot of tension between these two teams, but all the hits need to be made legally. That time they get Sean Taylor, and that's a big 15-yard penalty. So at the top of the show, you and I talked about it. Mike Lamb down on the sideline, he has mentioned it, that it may be an all-star game, but for these guys, it's pretty serious that they want to prove something. And if you didn't believe us, all you have to do is watch that replay. Personal these guys are out to let some weather one another. That's Personal foul, obviously, moves it down to the 17-yard line and a first down, first down for California. Phil Goodman, by the way, got California. up and jogged off the field. No harm, no foul. Brown with a long count. Gives to Tyler Ebell. Ebell. Stutter steps to the 15-yard line. JJ, Mike Lamb talked about Tyler Ebell at the top that he has something to prove today. He is only 5'9", 160 pounds. National record, his high school 
uh, senior season, 4,494 yards. But a different game at D1. Can he play college football? Oh, yeah, I, I don't think there's any question. I think that he has the speed and the quickness to be very elusive at the college level. You know, I think that Tyler Ego will go to UCLA. He'll be behind a huge offensive line. And, you know, you get these guys that they say are too small. They are the ones that work the hardest, and they are the ones that make a difference. Tyler Ebel will definitely go on. Mark my words, I'll mark this today. He will definitely go on and make an impact at UCLA. Three carries for eight yards for Ebel. Dominic Robinson is in at wide receiver. Top of the screen. Corral doesn't even look at him. He looks to the left side. He throws. That ball is intercepted. Coming, coming. Ball is picked off by Jamal Fudge. And he is intercepted. Boy, well, Jim, we thought that this was going to be an offensive shootout due to the fact that the defense has had to play a certain defense. The off both offenses are loaded with weapons on both sides of the ball, but so far, the defense, the backfield for both teams have come up huge, and this is just another big play. Corral throws high on this play, you see the zone coverage. So, that's Sean Taylor. I can't tell by the number. It looks like Sean Taylor, number 21, able to stay back. Or is Fudge, I'm sorry, number no, exactly. Fudge with the pick, JJ. Fudge is going to Clemson. Ed White High School in Jacksonville. Look at Corral threw that ball off his back foot and sailed just a bit on him. Fudge in perfect position. So first down for Florida now on the ground. Mike Gilliam. Still no score. 9-15 to play in the first half. Just Fudge over on the sideline. Big play by Fudge. Sending some greetings back to Florida. Says, yeah, let's get in that end zone. Yeah, interceptions, no stranger to him. Eight interceptions during the season. Now the defense did their job. Now it's up to the Florida offense. I thought it was a good call to run it on first down of the drive. Let everybody settle down with it. McPherson pumps to the one side, throws back, got a man. Profonso Thorpe. Crow Thorpe beat everybody on the corner. McPherson double pump to the left. Baited the safeties and threw down the right side. And Jim, this is a throw that no quarterback can't make, much less high school quarterback. Watch McPherson. He's going to stop. He's in the pocket. He's going to pump fake. Well, remember, the whole time that he's pump faking a receiver is stretching the defense. And he throws a strike 60 yards. That's almost, you cannot defend that. If the ball is too far down the field, you're requiring the defensive back to run with the receiver. Much too long for McPherson right on target. Carfonzo Thorpe calls himself the fastest man in Florida. He ran a 10.29 in the 100 meters. How good is that? It would have finished seventh in the NCAA finals. <laughs> He's a high school senior. 54 yards on the catch and carry. Kirk Thorpe down to the six yard line, first down for Florida. Loose ball. It looks like McPherson got back on it. Yeah, that matchup, Crafonzo, Adrian McPherson to Crafonzo Thorpe, boy, oh boy, that is just dangerous when you have a quarterback that can throw the ball that far on the money. And of course, as you mentioned, Jim, the, the self-proclaimed fastest man in Florida, Crafonzo Thorpe able to run under that easily make a big play. Second team, USA Today, All-American. He already has his Florida State helmet on. Crafonzo Thorpe going to Florida State. I think Coach Bowden gets the... Gets the new lids to him early. Hey, well, yeah, he's a little early, and he also probably wants him out of his game because he might need him in the fall. <laughs> now they kept the ball, but they lost it down. Second down, McPherson throws. Late across the middle, up in the air, and he throws it up for Bradford. It's back for a touchdown, and it's Thorpe again. Now, that isn't the way they threw it up, but it looked like a touchdown on the box score. And Jim, we're, stand, we're up behind McPherson, so you can see the angle he threw that ball at. And this is his worst decision of the day, is to throw this ball back across the field and into traffic, but he gets the best results because it turns out to be a touchdown. You see McPherson throw into a crowd. That ball gets tipped actually by a California defender, tips the ball up into the air, and Cofonzo Thornton right on the spot. So those two, two big plays on this drive in Florida take. So our first score of the day comes to 7.33 to play in the first half. Ryan Rankin now will try to make it 7-0 the guys from Florida. California won this game last year, 22-11 at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Extra point, they take their time and Rankin is through. Right down the middle, it's 7-0 Florida. 
A.D. McPherson, the quarterback, has done so many good things today. Got a little luck off the hands of a California defender. And Crow Thorpe makes it 7 up in Florida. Travis Coley from Palatka made a big hit in the secondary on Matt Clark and then on fourth down came in and might have gotten a piece of that punt. We've looked at it a couple of times and it's tough to tell. Either way, Florida gets the ball up close. Ball actually went out to the 43 yard line and again Florida begins to drive on the ground. We'll take a look at the punt again, and JJ, I don't know, I think it might have grazed the top of his helmet. Watch the yellow helmet coming in left side of your screen. Does it touch him? Yeah, it is very close, and the way the ball came off of Brian New's foot, it appeared to be partially blocked, but in either case, Travis Coley really makes this play because he puts pressure from the outside. We talked about within one week of practice, very little time, a little amount of time to be able to spend on special teams, so both teams have made plays, and right now, Florida has the best opportunity to take advantage of the California miscue. Pollock and Moses, the wide outs, that's Moses, makes the catch at the 31, a little juke down to the 27-yard line. Trey Moses. Delray, Delray Beach, Beach Atlantic High School, Atlantic. going to Rutgers. Jimmy, a notice for Florida, and new quarterback Dustin Allman enters the game. Dustin Allman from Orange Park High School. He's going to Brett Favre's alma mater, Southern Mississippi, and the book on him, mechanically very sound, no mistakes. Very sound and a strong arm. 12 touchdowns versus eight interceptions this year, so... He also had five running touchdowns and a receiving touchdown, so another good athlete at the quarterback position. 1,850 yards from Dusty Almond. Almond avoids some pressure, throws. There's that arm strength. Oh, yeah. Did he keep his feet in? Yeah. And the official says he did. Well, that's Gamble who makes the catch. And Chris Gamble from Dillard High School in Fort Lauderdale going to Ohio State. And how good is this? He just sits down, JJ, and Almond puts the ball right there. Jim, this is great field awareness by Gamble. You see how close he was Ooh. to the sideline, but you got to give Gamble credit. It looked like his knee might have been on the sideline, but in either case, he had field awareness. He did not run out of bounds or step out of bounds, able to keep those feet in and make a nice catch down near the two or three yard line. The official took a long time to look at it, and I like the fact he gave him the benefit of the doubt there because Gable did everything he had to do to keep his feet in and make that catch, and a great pass by Allman. First down for Florida inside the California five-yard line at the three. Handoff. Mike Gilliam looked like he had to hesitate a little bit, didn't get a clean handoff. Might even lose a bit here. It's already 7 up in Florida, 420 now to play in the first half. Mike Gilliam headed to Georgia. No stranger to the end zone for him this year, Jim. 33 rushing touchdowns. One receiving touchdown, so Mike Gilliam had an outstanding year in his senior year of high school. Mike Gilliam went to Lincoln High School in Tallahassee, which is the arch rival of Jim Saul's Leon High School. He said, it's finally good to see him on my sideline for, for a change. Four carries, 16 yards now for Gilliam on the day. And again, I don't think any of the rushers are going to put up big numbers today. Three guys in the backfield. Gilliam is one of them. They fake to Gilliam. And he dropped it. Like that pass is going for Cephas Johnson. And Cephas Johnson rolled out. The ball was right where it had to be, and he just dropped it. I remember in a goal line situation, they put Cephas Johnson in the backfield. He was the one that slipped out of the backfield on the play fake right there. But, you know, the big defensive lineman, not great hands. You got to put that ball right in the chest in order for him to hold on. You see another wide open receiver, but Cephas unable to hold on to that. His time to shine in the glory. You know, linemen don't get as many opportunities. You know, Mike Land has similar hands. He can't catch balls like that either. So, you know, linemen have a tough time trying to come up with catches like that. They need to leave that stuff to the skill players, Jim. See if this Johnson, 6'2", <laughs> 200, going to Iowa State. How come you pointed at yourself and you said skill players? <laughs> Incomplete on third down and goal. So California gets tough when it matters most. Inside the five-yard line. We got a break. Johnson dropped it. And now Almond comes up empty on third down. And so Florida will have to call on Ryan Rankin and ask for a field goal. Got two field goal attempts, both have been blocked so far. 
Sarah Kevin Rankin has a very strong leg. Jimmy said in practice during the week he was hitting it from 64 yards. So if he now the wind is going on, oh, it's going right to left. So he's actually kicking into the wind. But if it's an extra point, he said today if he can get a shot at a 55 to 60 yard field goal going with the wind in his back to take that shot, this is just a chip shot. Guy. Rankin from Riverview, looked good on a PAT of a four. Riverview High School in Sarasota. He's going to Florida Atlantic, 30 of 32 on PATs during the year, and that's just about what that one was. He bangs it through no problem, increases Florida the lead to 10 nothing. Now it's time for California to answer back, JJ, because this is something that we were worried about a little bit. Now just a reminder, don't miss the interactive national sports report each and every night at 10.30. Right here on Fox Sports Net, they give you all the day's scores, highlights, and the late-breaking news in the world of sports. It's the National Sports Report each and every night at 10.30. Be sure to check your local listings. That's live right now on Fox Sports Net throughout the United States. Some folks in Florida make the trip. And also tonight, it will be a tape replay, also a replay tomorrow here in California at 1 o'clock. Friends of Josh Martin. Fox Sports Net. So Kid from Silmar High School here in California. Uh, yeah, tomorrow, that and we appreciate Fox yeah, California, they need to settle down. They need to go back and just take advantage of what the right defense is giving them. Right now, they're trying to force the issue. If you're going to force the issue versus a 4-3, 3D zone defense, is going to cause you all kinds of problems. But they need to try to get that running game going. You have to create some balance in your offense so it just doesn't become a 7-on-7 seven seven pass happy drill. It's too easy for the defense zero in on your receiver. Bell Clark and Landingham, and this is going to be Clark scooping it up at the 16-yard line. Goes to his right side. Clark kicking up a little dirt after the 33-yard line. Tackle made by Sean Taylor. And here comes David Corral. David Corral. Definitely has the ability to score 4,907 yards in a season, which is ranked third nationally. So he's put up big numbers in his high school career. California needs to put up some big numbers and get this team in the end zone. California looks to get, be a little bit frustrated right now, JJ, because they're not quite clicking. I think a lot of that credit goes to the Florida defense. Just give the California quarterbacks anything deep. A little bit underneath, just like that. It's Dominic Robinson. It's like John Mack and the California coaches now just trying to get the ball into the hands of some great athletes. And one of those guys, of course, is Dominic Robinson. There's a flag on the play. 3.14 to go in the first half. Coming up at the break. This is what's ahead for us. Take a look at the players' visit earlier this week to the Ronald McDonald House in Los Angeles. And we'll talk with Chris Ricks, who has ties all over this game. He First played for California last year, was one of the heroes, and now he's quarterback at Florida, Florida State University. Yard. Of course, Mike and JJ and myself will sit down, look at the numbers, and the tape for the first half. So I'm at St. Bonaventure High School, 10 years as the head coach there, back-to-back -back CIF championships. We get a chance to see them this year. That personal foul against Florida again. Jim, as the tempers continue to flare, the late hits continue to mount up, and the referees are probably at wit's end at this point, so they're going to call penalties on anything that's even close to being late. Still in the first half. Things are getting a little bit ugly. Corral hands off Tyler Ebel. Ebel pops the seam. Ebel changes hands with a football. Stutter step to the 34-yard line. Tyler Ebel says, I, yeah, I can play. I can play here. I can play UCLA. I can play Pac-10. Just give me the football and get out of the way. It goes 13 yards. Yeah, Jim, and this is what we've been talking about. With that huge offensive line, if you're California, you got to take advantage of that. Put the ball on the ground. you got a great runner in Ebel in the backfield. Able to get to the edge, and once he gets out there, he is very dangerous. But like we talked about, if you're going to go one-dimensional, this Florida team is going to shut you down. You have to keep him honest. Tyler Ebo is the one person they can do that from his running back position. We've had a chance to, to know Tyler the last couple of years. What a great kid. Very confident, but just an infectious young man. You love being around him. I said, you know, these Florida guys are going to say, you're pretty small. What do you think of that? He says, they'll say that until I juke him. <laughs> And they won't think about it. Corral with some traffic throws to Smith. Smith to the 20-yard line. Ryan Smith, St. Joseph's High School. And he'll go to UC Davis as a wide receiver. You know, Jim, I never understood how somebody of Tyler Ebel's stature and with the numbers that he's put up still has to prove himself. Almost 4,500 yards rushing and still has something to prove that's incredible. 
Ebel so far on the day, four carries for 21 yards. You take a look at the throw to Smith again. This is what Florida is giving California, giving them that short stuff and then making the tackle. And you wonder how long before they cheat up and California tries to go deep. Under two minutes to play, first half. California shut out so far, 10 nothing Florida, Ebel. Ebel, the ball a couple of yards. Johnson, the play for Florida. Johnson, get on the tackle for Florida. Johnson, we talked about already. Palm Beach Gardens High School. On his way to Iowa State. Cephas Johnson, coach has told us, was probably the most impressive pass rusher all week in camp. Three-year starter, first team All-State, 94 tackles in high school. And had 28 tackles for loss. Among those, 17 sacks. <laughs> That's incredible number. Corral again. Ebel stays in to protect. Throws out the flat. He's got his receiver. This is Charles Ely who had a catch earlier today. Ely turns it up to the five-yard line. So California, their deepest penetration here. Their first real chance to get the end zone. Yeah, and that's Corral thrown in to his main target in high school. Ely, and you can just tell when these two hook up, the timing is there. You know, Pacific Palisade, they both put up a ton of numbers. Ely over 1,200 yards, almost 1,300 yards receiving on the year and 16 touchdowns. So those two very familiar with each other. And you can tell when the ball goes from Corral to Ely for whatever mysterious reason, it's always on time and right on the money. <laughs> yeah, you think those guys have played catch a little bit over the last four years? It's a first down at the five-yard line and whistles before we snap it. And timeout for timeout. California. California. And that timeout had to come from the sideline because the players were ready to go. Yeah, there's a little bit of confusion. Looked like Demetrius Williams was the extra receiver that the California team needed on the field. So as opposed to taking any chance or taking a penalty this deep in the red zone, they decided to call a timeout. Joe Conti is our referee. Each team now with two timeouts remaining. There's 1-10 to play in the first half. Debbie Corral will go to Vanderbilt. 44 touchdown passes as a senior, and you see the, the breakdown. Look at Florida State and UCLA at the First top of that list. Yes, he did well for themselves. We you know, it's it's funny, JJ, the Pac-10 has, has come seconds. back quickly now in the recruiting wars. Yeah, and the other thing that you got to remember is Washington, you see them with three, and they actually pulled guys off of the Florida roster. So, you know, these, these colleges definitely recognize where the talent is. The talent is definitely on this field. A ton of blue-chip prospects we've talked about. We can't emphasize it enough. These players are going to go on to outstanding college careers, some of them also in the NFL. First down for California. Tyler Ebell. Ebell fights his way to the two-yard line. Now Holmes got through first. Courtney Holmes from Stranahan High School in Fort Lauderdale going to UMass. He got through and got a hold of Ebell. Now Holmes goes 240, and Ebell... He's got a buck on 60, maybe. So he's got an 80-pound advantage, and Ebel's still yards, able to break out of the yards. tackle and pick up about a yard and a half. Would that be a mismatch? That's a huge mismatch. Second down from the two and a half. And off Ebel. Ebel trying to get in the end zone, carrying a guy with him. And short. It's Kevin Coley. Kevis Coley got on his back and rode him down at about the one foot line. Coley weighs over 200. Close to the goal line. Yeah, Kevis Coley going to Southern Mississippi. Watch the job by Kevis Coley. Able to penetrate behind the blocker, flip the block, and bring Ebel down. Now, remember Ebel. Very low center of gravity. Very tough to bring somebody back, but that time Coley able to deny him the end zone, bring up a third and short. Another timeout. John Mack, the California head coach, comes out into his huddle. And that's a little bit interesting because John Mack is handling the defense for California. Angelo Gasca, who's the head coach at Venice High School, is acting as the California offensive coordinator. But it was Mack who came out on the field. John Mack, background there, the green cap. Nice guy. A chance to spend some time with him at camp. Loves high school football. Third down and 23 seconds to play in the first half. They empty the backfield. Corral, keeping himself, tries to step in. Corral, does he penetrate enough? They're not going to give him a touchdown. No official with their hands in the air. The clock running at 14-13. And now the clock stops. Sharon from Palaka. He'll be attending Bowling Green. 
You know, Jim, the defense is going to get a great right, push on the offensive line, in. but I really don't understand that play. Why would you want Corral to carry that ball this close to the goal line? Go back and give it to Bell and run over those big hogs up front. They're huge up front. You only need a yard and a half when you get to the quarterback. He steps back. That's the allow the defense to get that surge and almost bring him down for a loss. Did they outthink themselves, JJ? They try to get a little too cute. We're going to empty the back, but we're throwing this football. Oops, here comes our quarterback. But you're not going to fool anybody down here on the goal line. You know, you're too close to actually take that chance of throwing the ball. you got to pound this ball. If you're the California team, you say, hey, there's a yard to go. You have two chances that if you can't pick up a yard in two rushes, you don't deserve this ball. We'll see if they go back to the run on this one. Well, they only need about three inches right now. It is fourth down, and there's 13 seconds to play in the first half, and this crowd comes to their feet. Corral under center, California down 10 nothing. Ebell's in the backfield. They give it to the guy who had 64 touchdowns, and he gets 65. Jim, and that play was made by Tyler Ebell because I tell you, Kevin Coley had another shot to bring down Ebell in the backfield for a loss, and that would have really shifted the momentum toward the Florida side. But Ebell able to use his quickness to elude the tackler, get into the end zone. California right back in this. Mighty Mouse becomes the superhero for California, and you got to wonder if Bob Toledo was watching this game. The UCLA head coach nodding his head and said, "Yeah, we knew all along he could play." That's right. You see, Coley, how fortunate California is because Coley was unblocked, untouched, and he was actually in position to make that play, but he fell. He is very quick, very shifty, able to just side swipe, sidestep Cooley into the end zone, California back within three. Brian New with the extra point. And cuts Florida's lead to 10-7. Well, you know, people talk about how small Tyler E. Bell is. He says, hey, that's an advantage for me. I have a low center of gravity. You talked about it. He can avoid those big guys. And you see, he gets by Kevin Schooley right here. E. Bell with the handoff, keeps his head up. That's the one cut he has to and steps into the zone. That's right, Jim. And, with, you know, with running back, his vision, speed, and quickness. And Tyler E. Bell has all of those, and that's why he is so successful. He's not going to beat you with his size, but he is quicker than everybody on the field. He can, has great vision. He's able to set up his block and elude tacklers like on that last play. And that's why he is thought of so in such high regard as going to UCLA. 66 yards on the drive from California. You saw the graphic. It's a good one. Tyler E. Bell, 21 yards of those on his own. California Bowl two, we talked about California going exclusively to the pass in earlier series. This last drive, they decided to commit themselves to the running game. That opened up the short passing game. That was a nice drive, nice play call by the California coach. Mike Lamb talked about it at the top of the show. That Tyler Ebell, probably more than anybody else on this football field today, still had something left to prove. All of these other guys with great resumes after four years on the prep level. Ebell gets the UCLA scholarship. A lot of people question that. Even some Bruin backers said, I don't know, can he really play? A small kid played in out, out in Ventura, maybe the competition wasn't so good. I'll tell you what, this guy's for real. Yeah, Jim, and I tell you, they said the same thing about another UCLA tailback, Deshaun Foster, and now you see what he's doing at UCLA. They couldn't be happier to get him, and everybody in the Pac-10 is wondering, how do we let this guy get by? So Deshaun Foster, another guy that went to a small school, that quote-unquote has something to prove after getting almost 5,000 yards rushing in his career. And, you know, goes on to great things at UCLA. I think Tyler Bell is one of the great Sean Foster came out of Myron Miller's great program down at Tustin High School where they only throw the ball on days that end in X. <laughs> at halftime, of course, check in with the visit to the Ronald McDonald House. And that had a great impact on a lot of these young men on both sides. We'll talk with Chris Ricks, the Florida State quarterback. Of course, played his high school football in California. Graduated from Santa Margarita High School down in the Orange County area. We'll look at the highlights from the first half. 10-7. Ford is going to take a knee and extinguish the, the clock in the first half. The Pretty much what we expected, J.J. We expected some Florida big things to happen on the field, not necessarily a lot of offense because these guys Florida already had a week yeah. to get together. California. Well, yeah, Seven. but the team speed of both teams is just phenomenal, and that is what is really been the factor of why the defense has been so effective. Here's one of the key plays of the first half. Watch the pump fake by A.D. McPherson, and then he throws to Crow Thorpe, who's got everybody beat on the corner, went for 54 yards, and put Florida inside. But then later in the drive, McPherson just thrown up. He wasn't looking for Thorpe, but Thorpe came down with it for the touchdown. That made it 7-0 Florida at that point. They added a field goal, 10-7. California scores before the half. That's where we stand, 10-7 right now. Let's go down to Mike Lamb on the sideline. I'm with California head coach John Mack, and Tyler Rebo's not the biggest guy in the world, but was there any doubt in your mind who you're giving it to on fourth? There's no question. Tyler is, is uh, 
probably 125 pounds a man and, and 124 of those is hard. That kid is, is, uh, brings everything he's got. I'm really, really proud of him. He's going to punch it in again. Watch the second half. Are you happy with what you've seen from your team so far? Well, we like to be leading by a bunch right now, so we're going to have to come out and do something to get it going. But, uh, you know, they're playing hard, doing everything they, that we've asked them to do, and, and we just got to take advantage and get us some breaks and get it in the end zone. Any adjustments that you can make? <laughs> Not a lot of adjustments in this game, but uh, hopefully we'll run better, catch better, and block better. Coach, good luck. All right. Back up to you, Jimmy. Mike Lamb, John Mack is one of those great football coaches. Always has a smile on his face. He's always pumped up, a very positive guy. He's got to feel good right now. California gets back on the board, back in the game. 10-7, to 7, Tyler Ebell rings the bell from one yard out. 